I'm Sam Boykin. Only, I've been working on this for about a year. I work with Peter Barnes uh, uh, from On the Commons, which is a think tank. Uh, Peter is based in Northern California. And we're not an official group, but you can visit the website. It's capanddividend.org. Sure, I'm here to talk about cap and dividend, which is a new climate policy idea, uh, a way to solve the climate crisis while protecting the incomes of the poor and doing it in a way that's politically possible and makes it, uh, gives it the legs to last for the 40 years that we need it to. 40 years is 20 congressional cycles, it's dozens of different economic cycles, and it's 10 presidential elections. And so when we're thinking about how to solve climate change, we need to do it in a way that actually makes political sense. Um, and so the, the plan that I'm talking about is something that's been developed by a guy named Peter Barnes, who's a great guy. He's an old entrepreneur, uh, and he was uh, one of the co-founders of Working Assets Long Distance. Uh, and now he's, for the last 10 years or so, has been out there kind of talking about this idea of uh, cap and dividend. Uh, it has a lot of other important good thinkers uh, that have signed on in support of it, like Robert Reich, uh, like Bill McKibben, and uh, dozens of others. But anyways, I'll just get to it. What it's called is cap and dividend, and there's three basic parts, uh, most of which will sound, I think, really familiar to people. First part is capping carbon. Uh, Peter's plan caps carbon in a different way than probably most people are familiar with. Uh, most people are familiar with capping emissions, uh, so trying to put a stoppers in all the smokestacks and tailpipes and every place carbon comes out into the economy. Um, what we've one of the main things we've learned in Europe is that is really hard to do. It's no big surprise. There's literally tens of hundreds of millions of places that carbon gets emitted in just in the United States. And so what Peter um, is talking about doing in, in this carbon cap is capping uh, carbon as it comes into the economy, as it comes into the country. So capping it on the few hundred uh, distributors of carbon, which are things like coal mines, uh, oil and oil refineries, uh, natural gas, um, natural gas pumps, uh, and those with just a few hundred, it's much easier and it's much more possible to cap carbon in a way that's fair. Uh, there's, uh, there's a lot of other benefits to that too. We're, we're not having folks in DC decide that this company gets X number of emissions and this company gets Y number of emissions. So that's the first part, cap carbon as it comes into the economy. The second part is auction off those per permits. So auction off 100% of them, make everybody pay, uh, do it at a, you know, it will create a, uh, the market will create the cost of carbon. Um, and then the third part is what, what do you do with that auction revenue? Um, that's go it's going to be hundreds of billions of dollars a year. Uh, but what that capping emissions is going to do also is it's going to raise the cost of carbon. And so that's going to fall on all consumers, anybody that uses gas energy and anybody that uses anything that uses gas and energy, which touches every piece of our economy. And so we, uh, in this plan, we're giving that money back to the public um, in equal checks uh, and giving it in monthly checks that would be automatically deposited into your bank account or if you don't have a bank account onto your debit card. Um, this is a way to do a bunch of different things. One, it helps protect people's incomes uh, and it, when they're paying increased costs of gas and energy, food, clothing, all these necessities that we have to buy. And the second thing is it's building, I think, political um, consensus and power in the idea behind capping carbon. As the cap goes down, the price of carbon goes up and people's dividend checks go up every single month. And so that way, if you're somebody that takes the bus to work, if you, um, you know, you don't have your air conditioning on 65 every day, if you're conserving, you're actually going to come out ahead and make money on this. Uh, if you drive a Hummer, if you have three different houses, uh, if you're somebody that uh, uses a lot of carbon and you're not conserving, you're actually going to pay in more. The other thing it's going to do is protect the poor and middle class incomes in a really significant way. 
Um, there's a good report done by uh, Perry, which is a political economic research institute up at UMass Amherst, that showed um, people in the first six deciles, so the first, the poorest people to the sixth poorest people, or fourth, um, are going to actually make money on their carbon dividend. So that's kind of the, the basic, and I could actually describe it a lot more simply, but that's a good.